So what is a click track? I use the term click track to just mean a metronome. And we use it to keep from speeding up or slowing down from the beginning to the end of our song. So why use a click track? Having a click track is like having a drummer keeping time for us. And in our case, we'll be recording each instrument in the song one at a time. And it's especially handy when there are pauses in the song so that all the parts can come back in at the same time after the pause. And another reason is for editing later on. So playing to a click means our performance will line up with the grid in Reaper, and we'll talk more about that later. So if you're starting Reaper from scratch, you'll be prompted to open a recent project or start a new one. So choose Yorkshire Lady from our previous example, and let's move on. So how do I set the tempo? Well, tempo is measured in beats per minute, or BPM, and there are two ways to set the tempo of your project in Reaper. You can type in the BPM in the transport bar, right beside the big clock, right here. By default, it's set to 120, but I know that this song is at 98, so I can just click there, type in 98, hit enter, and we're now at 98 beats per minute, so just a little bit slower than 120. Now, if I didn't know the tempo of the song, where it says BPM right above 98 here, when I hover, I get this tap icon. So I can literally just tap the tempo I want, and Reaper will tell me what that is approximately. So if I think about the song, which is this... Da, 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 da. I'm going to just tap this in. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, actually, I'm pretty, pretty darn close. You saw that it was kind of jumping around between 96 and 97. But I know that I want to do the song at 98. So I'm just going to type in 98. So how do I use Reaper's built-in metronome now? Well, you can turn the metronome on and off with the toggle switch here in the main toolbar. When it's on, the, the background is lighter. And to customize the metronome, we can just right-click on it. And we get this metronome settings window. There are a lot of options here, but we're just going to focus on a few of them. First of all, the primary beat volume, this is the level, sort of the overall level of the metronome, as well as the level of the stressed beat. Secondary beat gain is the relative level of the unstressed beats. And that goes down with the next thing here, which is beat pattern, so where A is a stressed beat and B is unstressed. So in the case of A, B, 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 we would have something that sounds like tick, tock, 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 tick, tock, tock, tock. And we could change that if we didn't want to stress the first beat of each bar. We could change it all to A, or we could change it all to B. But let's just take a listen to what this sounds like right now. I'm just going to go over here, hit play. I find that works well, so let's just move on. So there are a few things to keep in mind. So the metronome doesn't actually get recorded. It won't be heard unless we want to hear it. Reaper just creates it and keeps this grid all the time. So when we want to hear the metronome, we can turn it on and off as we choose. And we're going to work in 4-4 time. And uh, you may have noticed when I was singing a little earlier, the song has a triplet feel, and some musicians may argue that this is actually 12-8 time. It all depends on how you look at it. This is an intro to recording, not music theory. I'll just say that Reaper's tap tempo function doesn't really work as expected with compound time, and that's where you have 12-8 or 6-8 or something like that. So we're going to stick with 4-4, four, four, and now we're ready to record our first track. <laughs> 